Welcome to Like Nation to another beautiful day here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Today, we're going to talk about scaling. We're bringing this to you from Studio 34D, and we want to talk about what scaling becomes, how it works in concrete. So, Brent, if you don't mind, I know what scaling is, but some of our viewers might not. So sure. what is scaling? If you could describe it to them so that as they're walking across the sidewalk or something, they can go, hey, Brent and Josh talked about scaling, and that's what that is. Scaling is similar to the lamination, but it's caused by freezing and thawing. It can look similar to the lamination. Um, and there's really a couple of different ways that scaling can come about. Um, the first way is from traditional, what we think of as freeze-thaw damage to concrete. So concrete, uh, when it's out in the environment, it doesn't like to be frozen and then thawed out, frozen and then thawed out. And that's why we put air in concrete, you know, to help resist the effects of freezing and thawing. Once the freezing and thawing cycles overcome the air void system's ability to resist the expansion that comes when water freezes and the, and the continued movement that happens. Once, once that overcomes the concrete's ability to resist it, then you start seeing that manifest itself as parts of the surface of the concrete right. coming off. And it's typically going to be uh, described, I think ACI uses light, moderate, severe scaling as, as a way to characterize how bad it is. And, and most of those rely, uh, rely on a visual assessment of how much coarse aggregate you can see. So. Right. And the problem is once it starts, it's going to continue doing unless you do something to prevent it further on. Yeah, so de-icing salts are, are one of the ways that that's, that's made worse quicker. So right. de-icing salts hate concrete. They, they attack concrete uh, severely. So um, if your air is too low, that's another... Well, because it, it's not able to resist those free thaws. Yeah. And then high permeability concrete. Yep. And when I say high permeability, we're not talking about pervious. We're not talking about roller compacted sure. concrete. And most concrete, to some people, they think it's, in, it's impermeable and that you're not going to get water into it. But water getting into concrete is the worst thing that can happen to it. And it brings contaminants in, such as your de-icing salt. So when it melts and that water takes it in, it does create some issues. So we want to limit the amount of permeability sure. in order to reduce the effects of scaling. Yeah, so... We have some pro yeah, we have some products that'll do just that. It'll help uh, help resist the effects of freezing and thawing and de-icing salts. But there is another way that scaling occurs, and that is when concrete freezes during its early life. And when I'm talking about its early life, uh, um, ACI's cold weather concreting talks about the protection period. Right. Okay, the protection period being uh, the concrete is not yet at its strength that it needs to resist those freezing effects, that initial freeze. We're not talking about freezing and thawing, really. We're talking about that initial freeze that can happen in the first day, two, three days, or a week or so of, of the concrete's exposure to the elements. Then ice lenses can actually form in the concrete itself. You'll see them. Uh, they'll be oblong, oval-shaped, sometimes circular in the surface of the concrete. And if that occurs, you can almost guarantee that that's, those places that form those ice lenses are going to delaminate or scale uh, down the road. So, so protect the concrete. Use, use the recommendations that ACI gives you for cold weather concrete. Cure your concrete properly. I think always you've you got to talk that. about curing yeah. properly. Yeah, everything you can do is always a benefit when you cure your concrete properly. Yes. And again, going back to protecting your concrete. Unfortunately, there are people out there that want to do that first day of protection, and after that, they kind of let the concrete do do what it does, yes. and that's not going to be enough. No, it's not. Especially that first night, uh, the concrete often is going to still have enough of its own heat to 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 help protect it that first night. You still need to protect it that first night, but that second night is where I've seen most of the freezing damage occurs. That right. that second night, people think, well, you know, we don't have to protect it anymore. We can remove uh, the heat, or we can remove the insulation that we're using. Uh, and that's the worst time because the concrete by that point is is finished generating that exothermic right. reaction. Or not finished generate, but at least it's lost it's that reduced. heat to the environment. Yeah. So to wrap it up real quick, protect your concrete, protect it early on, protect, go through ACI's recommendations for it. Watch the icing salts on that first winter. Oh, you know, yeah. Be, be, be very cautious. Now, we want you to put it on there to make sure that you're safe. Yeah. We don't have any slippage. We're not recommending you not doing that. But to limit the amount that you can and, and when possible, try to not use it whenever you can. Um, make sure you get the right air in there. Yeah. That way you get a better freeze thaw protection. Yeah, lowest water cement ratio you can you can uh, practically use for exterior concrete. You want to keep the water cement ratio low so that you reduce the permeability of the concrete. 
uh, use uh, other products that are out there like Spraylock's P3 line of products for protecting your concrete against freezing and de-icing salts. Uh, we can reduce the chances of, of freeze thaw damage happening. And uh, that's really, make sure that you have the right concrete for the right exposure class. And ACI is a good source for that as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you watching our videos. Please do comment, like, and subscribe, or send us an email or give us a phone call. We'll be happy to help with your next project. Check out our website, congregation.com. Thank you. Thank you.